Okay, so today we are going to do knee strengthening and it's going to complement. So tomorrow we're going to do runner's yoga again. So the knee strengthening is going to complement that. And I know a lot of us are running and cycling at the moment as your daily, um, daily outside exercise. So strong knee is very important for that. You do tend to find that people that run a lot or that cycle a lot do have um, more pain in their knees, like they have issues with knee joints. So basically it's important to practice awareness and stabilize the knees by actively contracting and strengthening the muscles around them. Um, the four muscle groups that need strengthening in order to combat knee pain are your quads, your hamstrings, your hip adductors, which is your inner thighs, and your hip abductors, which is your outer thighs. So we're going to work on all of those things today. Um, and then tomorrow, we're going to do good old runner's yoga, which will also help with any knee pain that you guys might be having. But with that being said, if you guys would like to come down on to the mat into a seated position quite silhouetted today it's really bright out and just give yourself a little wiggle around shuffle that bum um, shake off any bits of excess static energy that you've brought with you onto the mat I'm quite um, fidgety so whenever I get on the mat I have to give myself a little wiggle and just get that energy out you can also Draw circles with your body, which I know some people do like to do that. Really, really opening up your chest and just starting to mobilize. And you can kind of freestyle this movement, so you can lift your hips up the mat as well. And it is the only time I'm going to say it is okay for you to unglue those hips. So once you feel like you've got yourself into a nice position just give those shoulders a little roll just loosening them up maybe one at a time or both together whatever feels good for you just deep circles there bring yourself down onto the mat length up through the spine palms on your knees facing up towards the sky neck nice and long sit bones glued down on the mat and close your eyes and let's take a nice deep inhale through the nose expand your abdomen Send all of that air down towards the bottom of your lungs, filling them like a glass all the way to the top. And as you exhale, reverse the breath and draw the navel in towards the spine. And inhale. And exhale. Start to tune into your breath and your body. And tune out all outside distractions, thoughts and worries. Take this time for you, for your breath, for your body. Forget everything you did before or need to do after. And just focus in on that slow inhale washing through you as though that breath is cleansing you from the inside out. Exhale like you're washing away and pushing out anything that doesn't serve you in this moment. With every inhale, sit a little taller, drop those shoulders down. Feel yourself grounding down into the mat through the sit bones, grounded but light. And start to take your imaginary broom and sweep the mind clear of excess clutter, wandering thoughts and worries. Leaving your mind clean, neutral. Feeling only your breath wash through you. And let's check in with those key tension points that we tend to hold on to. Human beings hold on to stress in really subtle ways, like clenching our shoulders, our teeth, or frowning unnecessarily. So take a nice deep breath and just drop those shoulders down away from the ears. And as you do, allow your neck to grow long. Feel those shoulders pulling down the spine towards the mat. And start to unlock the jaw. Drop the tongue down away from the roof of the mouth. 
Back teeth should not be touching at all. And allow your facial features to soften. No frowning, no tension. And notice the difference in the way that you feel when you let go of those three key points. So we are moving into week six of isolation, lockdown, quarantine, whatever you guys want to call it. So I want you guys to think in your head of something positive that you have done during this time that's been worth your while, that's actually been something that you thought, that is something that I wouldn't have been able to do before lockdown. It can be something tiny, like maybe you organized an odd sock drawer, which I really need to do. And just focus in on that tiny little achievement and take a nice deep breath and as you do, we're gonna take that little positive achievement and just hold on to it and we're gonna to start to mobilize our body very gently with a little bit of head movement. So draw your chin towards your shoulder and start to roll it from shoulder to shoulder. Just a little half circle to start to mobilize the neck and you can open your eyes if you'd like to, also feel free to keep them closed when we just do this gentle movement. If you want to progress this into a full head roll, please do. I know some people don't like a full neck roll, but if you do, feel free. Remember to send it both ways. Bring yourself back to center. We're going to take a little twist through the spine. Take that right hand behind you like a secondary spine, planting it down, keeping yourself upright. Left hand comes to the outside of the right knee. And you're gonna look over that right shoulder, sit up tall, inhale. And as you exhale, just push that knee away and twist through the waist. So I like a good twist to wake up the body. Really, really stretches out the spine and it compresses our organs, releases toxins. So when we release the twist, fresh blood flows through our organs, which is really, really lovely. Look as far as you can behind you. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, let go of that twist. Bring yourself back to center. Bring your left hand behind you. Right hand comes to the outside of the left knee, gazing over that left shoulder this time. Inhale. And exhale. Really, really feel that nice deep twist like you're imagining you're a dirty dishcloth, bringing out dirty water. Sitting up tall, inhale, twist. Exhale, let fresh water flow through you. Bring yourself back to center. Inhale, draw your hands together, interlace the fingers. Imagine you're hugging a giant beach ball. Drop your chin to your chest and curve the spine into a C shape. Take a nice deep breath here, inhale. And as you exhale, start to push those hands up towards the sky, dropping the shoulders down, neck long. And we're gonna to start to lean across to the left, stretching the right side of the body, but keep those bum cheeks smooth down on the mat. If you wanna take your left hand to your right wrist and gently pull, then by all means do that. Get a nice deep stretch from a hip to fingertip. And remember that bum stays glued, the hip stays even. Well done, give me one more breath. Reaching as far as you can, fingertips to the wall. Back to center, switch hands, right hand to left wrist and gently pull, keep the neck long. Inhale, bum cheeks glued, exhale, reach. Left fingers all the way over to the left wall. Energy shooting up those fingers, stretching all the way down the left side of the body, a nice deep lateral stretch. Try and keep that body aligned so you're not twisting, you're almost squashed between two planes of glass. Take one more breath here. Bring yourself back to center. Take the arms out to the side and just give those wrists a little twist. Wiggle the fingers. Just get a little bit of movement in there. And then draw the arms behind. Pull the shoulder blades together at the back like chicken wings and opening that heart center. Really nice. Take a nice deep breath. 
and let go bring those palms in front of you and bring yourself into an all fours position on your mat stack your joints wrists under shoulders knees under hips spine straight to begin with and you're pushing down with your palms your knees and the tops of your feet so much so that energy is almost lifting you off the mat and breathe here inhale and exhale and this time when you exhale i want you to breathe out with your mouth open like you're fogging up a mirror almost like a dragon breathing out smoke inhale through the nose exhale through the mouth and again inhale And this time, same thing, but keep your mouth closed. So you're going to feel that breath fogging up in the back of your throat. Might sound a little bit like you are snoring. Inhale. And again, this is your ujjayi breath. Inhale. Really nice, pushing down through the palms, tuck those toes under. And if you would like to, you can lift those knees about five to seven, 10 centimeters off the mat. Feel free to stay breathing in your all fours position if you prefer. If you want to get a little bit deeper into this stretch, get a nice little core exercise, strengthening the glutes and breathe in here. And breathe in here. Last time, pushing into those heels and drop the knees. Take a nice deep breath. Inhale, drop the navel to the floor, gaze up to the sky, mobilizing the spine with our cat cam. Exhale, arch like a scared cat, crown the head towards the floor. And if you're happy with this movement, the up down of your cow, cat cow by all means continue here. If you want to get a little bit deeper, if you want to get a little bit weird, Get your wiggle on, really get into whichever part of your body needs waking up. This is your chance to just really stretch out all those little nooks and crannies. Do whatever you want. It really doesn't have to be yoga at all in this instance. You just need to be waking up that body. And then you want to stretch those wrists, bit of an acquired taste. But if you are working on hand balances, this is a really, really nice one for stretching the wrists. Maybe you want to bring yourself all the way forward into your cobra. Maybe you want to push back into your child's as you reach the hands out. Maybe you just want to get into your neck. Whatever you're doing, really, really freestyle that movement. Lovely looking good, guys. And just giving yourself that wiggle. Give yourself three more breaths. And then gently bring yourself back to center. And we're gonna sit our bum back on our heels. So we're gonna take our hero pose. So hero pose is the ultimate knee pain relief, but it's very intense stretch. It's not for everyone. If, it, if you feel like it's really not for you, you can just stay kneeling and just breathe into, into this position. Or you can take Thunderbolt where you tuck the toes under and push the heels back. Um, but if you want to take hero pose, what we do, you're going to take your feet and your calves out to the side of your hips. And then you sit your bum down on the mat between them. So your bum is on the floor and your heels are at the side of your hips, calves almost in line with your thighs. So it's kind of bringing the knees together, pushing them inwards. Bring your palms onto your knees and we're going to try and take 10 deep breaths here. Try and keep that spine long, shoulders down, inhale. And it is an intense one, so if at any point you feel like it's just not serving you anymore, bring yourself out. Take Thunderbolt or just take a kneel or take your child's pose. Really nice. We'll go for three more, inhale. Two, keep that back straight. Really feel your abdomen expanding and drawing the navel in on every breath. One more time, inhale. 
Gently bring your palms in front, spread the fingers wide, and you're gonna tuck those toes under and push straight up into a downward facing dog, which counters the pose because it pushes your knees in the opposite direction of hero pose. Maybe give your legs a little walk out here if it's first downward dog of the day. If your hamstrings are feeling a little tight like me, by all means, take downward dog with bent knees. So what are we doing in our down dog? We're pushing into the outside of our palms, our little fingers, maybe very gently softening the shoulders and rotating the shoulders outwards. Ro rotating the shoulders outwards and very gently softening the elbows. Make sure the neck is long, shoulders away from the ears and you want a straight line from your tailbone all the way down to your hands. Head should be between your arms, gazing between your legs or at your belly button. And legs can be straight or bent. But if your legs are straight, make sure so is your spine. Heels are trying to draw down towards the earth, but if they don't reach, don't worry. Very rarely do I straighten my legs and bring my heels down, just because it is a bit of an intense one. Draw that navel in towards the spine and just give those legs a little walk out here. And then we're just going to start to stretch some of those muscle groups that we need to stretch to make sure our knees are straight. So we're going to start with our calves and our hamstrings. Inhale, we're going to come up on the balls of our feet, lift those heels. Exhale, dropping them back down, feeling that stretch down the backs of your legs. Inhale. If you've got tight hamstrings and calves, this is such a nice one. And lower. And give me five. And lowering the four, really nice, three, and lower, two, and lower, and one. And take a nice deep breath, drop forward into your high plank, wrists under shoulders. Body in a nice straight line, engaging that core. Make sure the bum's tucked in. Take a deep breath. Start to drop the knees towards the mat, but don't let them touch. Bum set back towards the heels and push up into your down dog. See that little circle? We're going to do four of those. Again, wave forward into your plank. Drop the knees. Bum to the heels. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, drop forward. Plank. Knees. Bum, exhale, down dog. And again, plank, knees, bum, exhale, down dog. Last one, plank, knees, bum, down dog. Well done. Give your hips a little wiggle there. Drop back down into your plank position. Drop the knees, untuck the feet, tuck the elbows in. And you're just going to drop yourself down, chest and chin, straighten the body out and bring yourself into your Sphinx pose. Take a nice deep breath here. And we're gonna take our Cobra or our Sphinx pose. So, Sphinx is exactly what we're doing. Forearms on the mat. You kind of look like one of the statues in Egypt, then the shoulders down the spine, neck nice and long. And while you're here, we wanna engage the bottom half of our bodies because that is kind of what we're trying to work on today. So you're pointing the toes. We never forget the bottom half of our body in this stretch. So when you point the toes, the knees are going to lift. You're going to feel that engagement in your glutes and your hamstrings and your lower back. Push down through your palms. Drop the shoulders down. Stretch the chest and abdomen. Neck long. And if you're happy here, lovely. And if you want to, you can take a cobra, which is where you're going to push yourself up a little higher. So your forearms are going to come off the mat. You're going to you're gonna get a deeper stretch through the spine. Still keeping those toes pointed so the knees are lifted. Inhale here. And exhale, really enjoy that feeling of the bend in your back wherever you are engaging. Remember to point those toes and really feel yourself engaging in the glutes and the hamstrings. Give me three, two, and one. And bring your chest down. We're gonna take our locust pose. So locust pose, is a really good pose for a lot of things. It's good for legs and arm strength. So we're gonna start with just bringing your arms behind you, lift the chest, the head, and the neck. And if you want to, you can lift your legs as well. So we're pushing our hip bones down into the mat. So we're strengthening here our legs. And if you wanna get even deeper, if you wanna make it a little harder, you can bring the arms out in front so they're in line with your ears. 
This is really good for lower back pain as well. And wherever we are here, give me five, four, three, two, and one. Drop your left ear to the mat and gaze to the right. Right ear to the mat and gaze to the left. Deep inhale, press your palms down, tuck the toes under, and you're going to come back into your downward facing dog, walking those feet out here. Take a nice deep breath, and you're going to start to walk those feet towards the front of your mat into your Uttanasana forward fold, softening the knees. So try not to, try and straighten the legs. Because if you have, unless you're super, super flexible, you're trying to straighten the legs, you're probably going to give yourself a, a curve in the spine. So it's much better to keep the back flat, soften the knees, and then you're not putting any extra pressure on your knees or your legs either on your hamstring. Take a nice deep breath here, inhale. And exhale. And then take your left hand in between the feet, so it's in the center of your feet. Start to bend the left knee and straighten the right leg. Reach that right arm up so you're opening your chest out to the side. Deep inhale here. Exhale, drop the right hand to in between the feet. Bend the right knee, straight the left leg and open up to the left hand side, reaching that left arm up, inhale. Exhale again, drop that left hand to the center of your feet, bend the left knee, straight the right leg, reach that right arm up, opening the chest to the right hand side. Make sure those arms are aligned. Take a nice deep breath. And last time, drop that right hand to the center, bend the right knee, straight the left leg, opening up to the left hand side. Deep breath. And exhale, bring yourself back to your Uttanasana forward fold and start to unravel like a chain link, rolling the whole way up, keeping that chin tucked into your chest, but unraveling all the way up to standing, all the way to your mountain pose. Feet, I'm just gonna move the camera so you guys can actually see me. So mountain pose, standing nice and tall, feet together. Arms down by your side, make sure that your body is stacked so you want ankles under knees, under hips, under shoulders, making sure our posture is right. So any kind of pain that you do have in joints in your body, it can be very likely to do with posture. So always making sure that our posture is good, joints stacked, pelvis neutral, so you're not sticking your bum out or bringing your pelvis forward. Always imagining your pelvis as a glass of water where you don't want to spill anything. Shoulders down and reach down with those fingers towards the ground. So we're engaging our legs isometrically. Neck long. Inhale. Raise your arms up towards the sky. Draw the palms together. Gaze up at your thumbs. Exhale. Hinge at the hips. Draw the elbows out to the side. Bend the knees. Uttanasana. Forward fold. And inhale. Gaze straight ahead, softening those knees, bringing those feet together, bring the arms out in front and you're going to bring yourself into your chair pose. So making sure in your chair pose, your weight is in your hip sockets. So what you want to avoid is bringing your knees forward. Your knees are behind the toes. So you're literally imagining that you're sitting in a chair, an invisible chair, shoulders down away from the ears, neck long, arms in line with your ears, and sit deeper into the chair, really feel that engagement in your glutes. If this pose strengthens your hips, thighs, and calves, which improves knee function. So inhale, lengthen, exhale. Take one more deep breath here, inhale. And on your exhale, you're gonna step that left leg back into a high lunge. Make sure that your knee stays above your ankle on the right hand side and your hips are under your shoulders. Inhale, sitting into that front knee bend. So high lunge is really, really good for leg strength and stability. And the balancing as well strengthens all the muscle groups that we need to support the knee. So sit there into that high lunge, deep breath, inhale, and turn that left foot out. Warrior two, arms in line with your shoulders, gazing down that front fingertip. Take a nice deep breath here. 
Inhale, and as you exhale, start to hinge forward, turn that right palm upwards to face the sky, and pivot backwards into your reverse warrior or your peaceful warrior, whatever you want to call it. Send that left arm down the back of your left leg. And if you want to take a half bind, you can bring that left arm all the way around to touch your right thigh. So your reverse warrior activates and strengthens the glutes, quads, and hamstrings and all the muscles that we need to keep the knee in good shape. And I'm just going to switch sides here. Taking a nice deep breath. And then from here, we're going to bring our arms back out in line with our ears, turn the palms outwards and start to hinge forward into your triangle pose. Take a nice deep breath here. And from here, we're going to start to straighten that front leg, bring yourself into your extended triangle, gazing up at that extended arm. And what you want to make sure in your triangle is that there's an equal distribution of weight between the feet. Bring the palm into the small of your back and you can gently push your hips into alignment. Your shoulders want to be stacked on top of each other. So it doesn't matter if you can't bring your hand down onto your knees. If you're up a little bit, that's fine. Just make sure the shoulders are aligned. Make sure that your body is almost as if you've been put in a toaster. And get, try and gaze up at that extended arm if you can. Inhale. And exhale gently, bring yourself back to standing, bring finger and thumb onto your hips. And you're gonna bring yourself facing forward. So turn the hips to face the front. You might wanna step that back foot in slightly and turn both feet to face forward. Both legs nice and straight, making sure you're sitting up nice and tall. So hips under shoulders. I always use the finger and thumb here as a kind of steering mechanism to make sure that my hips aren't opening up, that they're steering straight ahead like car headlights. Take a nice deep inhale and as you exhale we're going to start to hinge forward through the hips trying to keep the spine flat and bring ourselves into our pyramid pose. So maybe you are happy halfway, maybe you want to bring the hands to the thigh, the calf or the ankle and maybe you want to take those hands down on either side of that front foot. Inhale. And exhale, start to fold forward. So you're trying to glue the torso onto the thighs. So try and keep your spine flat here. And what you want to aim for is not dumping all of the weight into your front foot. You're keeping both legs nice and straight, equal distribution of weight, nice stretch through the hamstrings, inhale. And exhale. And try to bring those palms down. We're going to take a little bit of movement here. So you're going to step that foot, that back foot back a little bit, and we're going to drop down into a lunge. And then we're going to straighten. So inhale, we're going to lunge. Exhale, we're going to straighten. And lunge. And straighten. And lower. And straighten. And lower. And straighten once more. Lower. And straighten, and from here, we're gonna walk the hands around to the center, take your wide leg forward fold. I'm just gonna switch the sides so you guys aren't just looking at my butt. Both feet facing straight ahead and hinging at the hips and starting to walk those hands in line with the feet and draw the crown of the head towards the mat. So we're stretching on the backs of our legs and our hamstrings and our calves. And it's a really good one for lower back pain, this one, because it extends our spine. Inhale. And exhale. Trying to pull the crown of the head towards the floor. Take a nice deep inhale here. One more deep breath. And then gently walk your hands back on either side of that front foot. Place the palms flat and you're going to step back into a plank position and from here you can even push straight back into your downward dog or you can take a little vinyasa with me, tuck those elbows in, come down through your chaturanga, push forward up for facing dog, make sure the tops of the feet are down on the mat, up for dog is a really good one for posture as well, tuck those toes under, downward dog, really nice, start to walk those feet towards the front of the mat. And back into your Uttanasana forward fold with soft knees. Take a nice deep breath here. And 
and then we're going to start to roll ourselves up to standing, keeping that chin up into the chest, bringing yourself all the way up to standing, shoulders down, arms down by your side, mountain pose, engage those legs isometrically. You might always manage to cut my head off in this pose. Inhale, raise your arms up towards the sky, gazing up at your thumbs. Exhale, bring the elbows out to the side, hinge at the hips, soften the knees, back to your forward fold with soft knees, and keep those feet together, the knees soft, Take a deep breath, bring those arms out in line with your ears, chair pose. Sitting back, putting the weight into your hip socket to ensure that your knees are behind the toes always. And we're sitting in that imaginary chest. You're gonna feel that engagement in your glutes, strengthening your hips, thighs, and calves to improve our knee function. It's also a really good one for core. I always sweat in chair, I don't know about you guys. I really feel like I'm doing a full body workout just by holding it. Take a nice deep breath. And we're gonna step back with the right into your high lunge. Make sure that left ankle is underneath the left knee. Hips are under the shoulders, arms in line with the ears and drop those shoulders down. So remembering our high lunge is good for leg strength and stability and it's got a little balance to it as well, which uh, adds to a strengthening and all the muscle groups that support the knee. Really nice, take a nice deep breath. Turn that right foot out. Arms in line with your shoulders. Warrior two, tuck that tailbone under, neck long, lovely. Gaze down that front fingertip, start to hinge forward, turn that left palm upwards and bring yourself back into your peaceful warrior, left arm up and over. If you're happy here, lovely, if you want to take a little half bind, bring that right arm all the way around to touch that left thigh and sit into that front knee bend, really nice. Lovely, well done. Really feel that bind, feel that stretch down the left side of the body. Take a nice deep breath here. Open those arms out to the side. Turn the palms outwards and you're gonna pivot forward into your triangle pose. Try and gaze up at that extended arm. And once you're there, we're gonna straighten both legs. Make sure those hips are aligned by bringing the palm of your right hand into the small of your back and just gently pushing those hips into alignment. Legs straight, shoulders reaching that right arm up now. Shoulders wanna be stacked on top of each other. So your arms are basically in a straight line all the way from palm to palm. Try and gaze up at your extended arms. And I always say in this one, if you're a little bit uncomfortable, probably means you're doing it right. And if you really, really want to get your alignment perfect, it's good to practice this one against a wall. Give me one more breath here. And gently bring yourself back to standing. Bring fingers and thumbs onto those hip bones. Steer those hips to the front. And we're gonna turn the feet both facing forward and just step that back foot in maybe a little bit. Make sure those hips are under shoulders. So fingers and thumbs, remember, I use them as a steering mechanism to make sure that my hips are straight ahead like car headlights. So what you want to avoid is kind of having a bit of a naughty open hip here, because um, that can put a little bit of extra pressure on your hamstrings and your hips. Now from here, we're going to start to hinge at the hips, bring ourselves forward, try and make sure there's an equal distribution of weight between the legs, keeping both legs nice and straight, keep that back straight. And if you're happy here, lovely. If you want to bring your hands to thigh, calf, or ankle, lovely. If you want to bring your hands on either side of that foot, front foot, really nice. Trying to do that torso to thigh, trying to keep those legs nice, equal distribution of weight. Inhale and exhale, well done. And let's step that back foot back a little bit and we're going to come down, lunge and straighten, really nice. And lunge and straighten. And feel that deep stretch through the hamstring as you do this and lunge and straight and try not to send the knee too far forward and straight which is quite easy to do when you're doing this movement quickly and give me one more of those well done start to walk the hands to the center wide leg forward fold trying to glue your crown of the head down onto the mat nice stretch through the lower back extending the spine hinging at the hips feel that pull on the back of the hamstrings and if you want, you can take your fingers around your big toes and start to pull the elbows out to the side in front. And exhale. And inhale. 
And exhale, one more breath in. Gently bring your hands back to center. Start to walk them across to the left foot on either side of that left foot. And step back into your plank position. And if you want to, push straight back up into your downward facing dog. If you want to join me for a little vinyasa, elbows in, come down through your chaturanga. Push forward, up with facing, tucking the toes under, and push back. Down with facing duck. Give yourself a little wiggle here. Slight bend in the knees, gaze straight ahead. Step, float, or jump into a seated position on your mats. Let me just move the camera again. I really need a, like a remote that moves the camera for me so I can actually get all of me in. So bringing yourself into your seated position, we're gonna take our half lord of the fishies, which is a nice um, twist. It's pretty good for a lot of things. Twisting is really good for a lot of things, but it does relieve knee pain by stretching um, the outer hips and it relieves uncomfortable sensations. If you've got sciatica, it's a really good one. So keep your knee and your calf and your ankle nice and straight on the right leg. You're gonna take your left leg and you're gonna bring it up and around and plant that left foot on the outside of your right knee. So your right knee to ankle is almost in line with the top of the mat and the left leg's gonna come all the way up and around planting that left foot over the top of the right knee. Try, if you can, to keep your sit bones nice and even. And then you're gonna reach up with the right arm, bring the left arm behind you, and you're gonna take a nice deep exhale, bring that right elbow to the outside of your left knee. So right elbow outside of left knee, gaze over your left shoulder, and gently push with that right elbow, push against the knee to feel a nice deep twist through the spine. And if you're super confused and you're thinking, what the hell has she just said? Um, I do find that half lord of the fishies is a bit of a confusing one. So if you are feeling a little bit confused, you can take the same twist that we took right at the beginning of the class. So with cross leg, you want to take left arm behind and right hand to the outside of the left knee. If you're in half lord of the fishies, well done for following my instructions. And sitting up nice and tall, shoulders down, neck long, and gently push that knee away wherever you are, whichever version you're in. You're still going to get a nice deep twist through the spine. It really doesn't matter. And take a nice deep exhale, gently bring yourself back to center, but you're going to walk the hands around to the right and just give yourself a little counter twist there. Kind of feel that release in the spine. And then gently back to center. And you're going to drop now that left leg. So your left knee to ankle, parallel with the top of your mat, nice and straight. Take your right leg now and you're going to pump that right foot over the top so it comes to the outside of your left knee. Plant both bum cheeks down on the mat if you can. And this time we're bringing our right arm behind us so it keeps us upright. Left arm's gonna go up in the air. And then you're gonna take that left arm, bending it at the elbow. Well, I don't know where else you bend it, but bending the left arm and taking the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. And just gently gaze over that right shoulder, push the knee away, inhale, we lengthen. And exhale, twist, really, really feel that twist through your spine and your shoulders. Trying to look all the way behind you. And remember, if you wanna just take this cross-legged, the same twist we did at the beginning, by all means do. You're still getting a nice spinal twist. You're still getting the same effect. Taking a nice deep breath. Try and keep that right foot flat if you can. Well done, everybody give me one more deep breath here. Gently rolling back to center. And bring yourself into a seated position, feet flat, knees bent. Arms are gonna come in line with your legs and you're gonna to start to roll yourself back down onto the mat one vertebra at a time. Engaging the core as you go, gluing that spine down onto the mat. And when the spine is completely flat, your hips will have a very, very gentle tilt. And that's exactly what we want. So feet and knees parallel like train tracks about hip width apart. And you wanna make sure that your legs stay in this position for the entire time that we're in bridge. What you want to avoid is your knees falling out to the side or your feet bowing open. 
So when your legs stay parallel, it engages your glutes and your hamstrings. It keeps your hips nice and aligned. It stops your knees um, going, in, going out of alignment, which can cause them to hurt. So bring your palms down on either side. Take a nice deep breath here. And as you exhale, we're going to start to roll up through the hips, lifting those hips up towards the sky. Imagine someone's got a bit of string and they're pulling you up through the pelvis into your bridge. And if you want, you can walk those shoulders together underneath the back, interlace the fingers and the hips nice and high. Remember, keep that alignment in the legs so you're engaging those glutes and hamstrings. So this is a really good pose for insomnia, anxiety and stress. It's a lovely one for pelvic floor. So ladies, if you've had a baby or if you are pregnant, this is a really, really good one to practice your Kegels in. When it comes to knees, what we are doing is it's a glute and hamstring strengthening stretch and it also works and activates the IT band which is very important for having good knee health and give yourself three more breaths here, three, two, and one, gently start to roll yourself back down and onto the mat one vertebra at a time. Peeling that spine back down, hug the knees into your chest and gently rock from side to side in your apanasana just to release that spine. And from here, take a nice deep breath. You're gonna straighten out the left leg and draw the right knee in towards your chest. Very gentle hamstring stretch. You can give your ankle a little rotate here if you want to. And then take a nice deep breath. Start to drop that right knee open to the side. You wanna keep your spine flat and your hips aligned. So if you want to, you can use your left hand to push down on that left hip to keep those hips nice and aligned. And if you wanna get deeper into the stretch, you can take reclined hand to big toe pose. So that's where you bring your fingers around your big toe. And you're just gonna straighten that leg out to the side, getting a nice hip opener, getting into your hamstring and make sure that your spine stays flat on the mat. So this is good for your hip flexors, your hamstrings and any general knee pain that you might be feeling. Take a deep breath. And if you're holding on to your big toe, I want you to gently let go and, uh, and draw the knee back in. And now everyone bring that leg back to center with a bent knee and you're gonna straight the leg again. So you're pointing that toe up towards the sky, spine nice and flat, flex the foot. So if you want to, you could try and bring your fingers on to your big toe. If that is too much, take your hands to the back of your calf or the back of your thigh, the back of your calf or the back of your thigh. Try not to bring your hands onto the back of your knee. You wanna avoid putting your hands on that area. And wherever you are, take a deep inhale, feel yourself melt into the mat, and as you exhale, try and pull the leg towards you a little deeper, getting deeper into your hamstring. Inhale. And exhale. Really, really nice. Give me one more deep breath here. Really feel that pull down the back of your legs. And as you exhale, forward that knee in. Straight the right leg out and draw the left knee in towards your chest in. Maybe give your ankle a little rotate here. Spine lying nice and flat. Exhale. Very, very gentle hamstring stretch to begin with. And then placing your right hand on your right hip, take your left knee and just dropping it open to the sides so we're opening up the hip. And if you're happy here, lovely. If you wanna go a little deeper fingers around your big toe and just straight that leg out so you're getting into your hip even deeper and your hamstring. And remember, keeping the spine flat, so try not to lift the right hip off the mat. That's why I like to use my right hand to push it down, make sure that it stays aligned, it's not being naughty and lifting up. And breathe in here. 
sink into that hip opener. So as well, if you are a runner, these ones are really, really good to do before or after you run. They are so good for hamstring and knee health. Um, they're just generally a really great stretch. And they're a progressive hamstring stretch as well. So um, if you inhale, you lengthen and exhale, try and pull yourself a little deeper into the stretch. And then gently bend the knee and draw that knee back into the center. Take a nice deep breath and straighten it out so that your foot is pointing up towards the sky. Flex your left foot and hands either on the back of your hamstring, so your thigh, your calf, or trying to take fingers to your big toe. So you might find that one side is a little bit tighter than the other, which surprisingly today is my left even though I did a really bad injury on my right. But you'll notice as well it might change. So if you feel like you've pulled something when you're running, well, if you feel like you've pulled something when you're running, then just be very, very careful because hamstring injuries are the absolute worst. So inhale, keep that spine nice and flat, and exhale, always trying to pull the leg towards you a little bit. Take one more deep breath here. And gently drop that left leg down. Take both knees in towards your chest. And you can either take your up and asana where your knees are drawn in, you're giving yourself a little hug, or you can take your fingers around your toes and just take your happy baby. And then straight both legs out, point the toes, bring your feet together and just bring the palms into the small of the back and just lift up onto your forearms and just take a little fish pose to finish. Let your head roll the whole way back, pushing that chest up towards the sky, just countering those little stretches where we kind of pull our legs in towards us. Pointing those toes, make sure you're engaging the legs. And give me five, four, three, two, and one. Gently bring yourself back down onto the mat, arms on either side. Bend the knees so your feet are on the mat, and you're just going to windscreen wipe the legs. So knees to the left, face to the right, and back the other way, right with the knees, left with the head. And again, just getting that movement. Knees from side to side. Feel that nice release in the spine. And then gently bring yourself back to centre, start to straight the legs, bring the arms above the head, full body stretch. You guys know the drill. Fingers and toes pointed, reaching from one side of the room to the other. Tension in every single part of your body, including your face. It doesn't work if you don't screw your face up, make the ugliest face you've ever made in your life. Tiny beady eyes, screwed up nose, tiny little mouth. Draw those shoulders all the way up towards your ears, million double chins, everything basically that I've told you not to do, do it now. And imagine that someone's got your fingertip nails and toenails and they're trying to pull you from one side of the room to the other to add extra inches onto your body. You are literally in pain from the tension of this stretch. And while we're here building this big physical tension, I want you to throw in all your mental tension as well. Anything that's been pissing you off, put it all on the pile, throw it all in, Reaching from one side of the room to the other. Really, really build that big tension bump up and we're just going to let it all go. Give me five, four, three. And one, let go. Bring the arms down by the side. Let the feet fall open. Deep breath in here. And exhale. Feel free to grab water, blankets, socks, jumpers, cushions, dim your lights, change your music, do whatever you need to do. And then bring yourself back down onto the mat for your Shavasana. You are very welcome to take Shavasana however you would like, but I have to recommend taking it lying on the mat. And also, which I haven't actually said before in my online classes, but I usually say in my studio classes, um, you don't have to take Shavasana. If you decide to log off before Shavasana, I absolutely will not be offended. It's definitely not for everyone. Um, but it is quite lovely if you do want to stay for it. So just bringing yourself back down onto your mat. 
palms open, eyes closed, feel yourself melt down into the ground. And let's bring ourselves back to where we were at the beginning of the class. Taking a nice deep inhale through the nose. Expand your abdomen, send all of that air towards the bottom of your lungs. Filling them like a glass all the way to the top. And when you reach the top, exhale, reverse the breath, navel to spine. And again, inhale. And exhale. Bring yourself back to that deep breath. Maybe pausing at the top of each breath to always teach your body to breathe deeper, to use the full capacity of your lungs. And as we inhale, feel that breath washing through you, almost cleansing you. Exhale, release. And start to clear your mind. Take back that imaginary broom and sweep the mind free of clutter, wandering thoughts. Anything that does not serve you in this moment, get rid of it. Checking back in with those tension points, making sure the shoulders are down away from the ears. Jaw soft, teeth unlocked. Time away from the roof of the mouth. And facial features soft. Take your attention to your feet and feel them fall open on the mat. Each toe unraveling one by one. Ankles, calves, knees and thighs becoming lightweight. As though someone has taken the batteries out of you. All the way up to the base of your spine and feeling each vertebrae. Trickle down into the mat, becoming one with the earth. All the way up to your shoulders. Feel the shoulders melt further away from the ears, melting into the ground like lava. Moving away from the ears, creating space for our neck to grow long. Arms light at your side with your palms open and fingers unraveled, exposing your palms to the sky. Neck long, head light. Facial features soft and gentle. Jaw unlocked. Finally, take your attention to your chest and your abdomen. Focus in on that slow and steady rise and fall of your breath. The deep and driving rhythm. Working your body into a nice, deep sense of calm. And as you lay here, becoming completely relaxed and light on your mats. Imagine yourself lifting up from the mat and drifting away on a gentle breeze. Your only focus is your breath. As you inhale and exhale. And gently start to wiggle your fingers and toes to draw awareness back into your body. Hugging your knees in towards your chest. And gently rocking from side to side to release your spine on the mat. 
and bring yourself over into a fetal position. And gently in your own time, bringing yourself up to seated. And bring your palms onto your knees. You can keep your eyes closed if you would like to. And take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale let out, a deep sigh. <sighs> and again, inhale. Now let it all go. <sighs> and last time, biggest sigh, everything that you want to let go, let it go. Inhale. <sighs> Palms together at your heart center. Thank you all so much for practicing with me tonight and every night. You really, really are making my lockdown much more bearable. Um, stay safe, happy and healthy. Namaste. As always, feel free to drop comments, or suggestions of things that you guys want to do. And I will get back to everyone on Facebook and Zoom. I will answer those now. Tomorrow we're going to do runner's yoga again, which should complement what we've done today. Um, it will get deeper into our legs and things. Um, so if you are running at the moment, it's a lot of stretches that you can do before or after you run. Obviously, you don't have to do a whole hour flow before and after running because, I mean, hats off to you if you do, but I wouldn't. 